Okay, here I've drawn the electron transport chain, and we have the different complexes, so one, two, three, four, and then complex five is ATP synthase. Now, mind you, I'm depicting this in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And here at the bottom, it's the matrix of the mitochondria, and then this is the intermembrane space, okay, which is the space between the inner membrane where you have this electron transport chain and the outer membrane, which is not shown. Now, this process is going to occur in eukaryotes within the mitochondria, but in bacteria, it'll gonna, it's gonna happen at the cell membrane since they don't have membrane-bound organelles. So what is actually going to happen? Well, remember that basically you have complex one and you're gonna have NADH, okay? So this is an electron carrier, deliver electrons to complex one, okay? And then at the same time, by, via a reaction catalyzed by succinate dehydrogenase, which is an enzyme of the Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle, uh, you will have production of FADH2, okay? And that will deliver its electrons directly to complex two. Now, what happens to these electrons? Well, these electrons are shunted, first of all, by complex one to this molecule in the membrane called coenzyme Q. It's a lipophilic molecule that carries electrons in the inner membrane. And the same thing will happen with these electrons from complex two. They will also go to a molecule of coenzyme Q. And ultimately, coenzyme Q will deliver these electrons to complex three. And then complex three will give these electrons to cytochrome C, which is a molecule in the intermembrane space. And cytochrome C will deliver these electrons one electron at a time to complex four. And what will complex four do? Well, complex four will shunt these electrons ultimately to the final electron acceptor, which is oxygen. And in the process, oxygen is reduced into water. So essentially, NADH and FADH2 are initially oxidized, give up their electrons, and through a series of oxidation reduction reactions, these electrons are given to oxygen, which is reduced. So what is the purpose of this? As it turns out, the movement of these electrons, okay, to oxygen, ultimately is an exergonic energy releasing process, meaning that the delta G of this entire process is negative. Okay, so energy is released. That energy is actually harnessed by some of these complexes, okay, specifically complex one, three, and four, to pump protons from the matrix of the mitochondria, okay, ultimately into the intermembrane space against their electrical and chemical gradients. So they start to accumulate there, okay, and that process is an is an endergonic energy requiring process. So the delta G of that process is positive. So the idea is that the energy released through shunting the electrons is used to uh, fuel the movement of those protons against their gradient. Now, what's the purpose of that? Well, as it turns out, right, these protons are trapped in this intermembrane space because they're cations, right? They can't pass the membrane freely to move down their electrical and chemical gradients. However, complex five, which is ATP synthase, provides a channel. So there's a channel in complex five, right, which allow, allows these protons to move through, moving down their gradient, right? So these protons ultimately are gonna move through and they're gonna move down their gradient back into the matrix. Now, what's the purpose of this? Well, the purpose is that complex five, okay, will actually harness the kinetic energy of proton movement to ultimately drive the synthesis of ATP from ADP plus inorganic phosphate, right? So you get ATP. And this is called oxidative phosphorylation, okay? So the idea ultimately, right, is that you establish an energy gradient, okay? You establish this proton gradient, which has some potential, chemical potential energy, an electrical potential energy. And then uh, that electrical and, and, and chemical potential energy is converted into kinetic energy through their movement down the, through the channel in ATP synthase. And that kinetic energy is converted into mechanical energy as complex five sort of undergoes conformational changes, right? And ultimately that mechanical energy is then converted into chemical potential energy in the high energy bond of ATP. And that's how you get ATP through oxidative phosphorylation. So understand this process well.